Welcome to RegenMed Global, the podcast, where we bring you the newest breakthroughs in medicine and research to help bring hope in fighting incurable diseases. My name is Shion. Today, we're here to discuss the latest research about the development of a new drug that can potentially regenerate hearing. Um, leading this research and speaking up with us about this, we have Associate Pre- Professor at Harvard Medical School, Dr. Zheng Yi Chen. Dr. Chen, it's a pleasure to go and have you. Thank you for joining. Thank you very much for inviting me. It's a great honor to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Before we get started, can you tell us a little bit about your background? Um, yes, I'm a researcher um, uh, working on the development of treatment for hearing loss. And I'm working at the hospital called Mass Eye and Ear in Boston. And uh, the, we are part of a Harvard Medical School. So my lab has been focusing on uh, different uh, areas, including regeneration of inner ear hair cell, including the development of treatment for genetic hearing loss and uh, also on the new delivery tool for the inner ear um, drugs in the future. Just so at least we have a little bit of understanding. So, I mean, hearing, hearing loss is a very broad term. Uh, can you tell us what are some of the causes? Yes. Uh, hearing loss is actually one of the most common form of sensory deficit. Mm-hmm. affecting humans. So we have, you know, we could have a, a other like a vision loss, but hearing loss is among all those common, most common deficit, sensory deficit. There's many reasons for anyone can have a hearing loss. The most common form of hearing loss is called age-related hearing loss. That's when people, you know, reach certain age mm-hmm. and the different hearing loss for which we actually don't know the real reason except being aging. And the age, of course, affect every aspect of our lives. So we yeah, we don't even know what cause age-related hearing loss yet affects it. And it's a, one of the most common form of uh, hearing loss. The other um, types of hearing loss very common, such as noise-induced hearing loss. Everyone has experience when, when you expose a very loud noise sometimes people can have a, a hearing loss, but then they can recover. But for some other people, they have hearing loss that become permanent, that cannot be recovered by itself. The other um, condition could also cause hearing loss, such as viral infection. The kid could have a viral infection that can cause a hearing loss. And for children, one of the most common form of hearing loss is called genetic hearing loss. That is. And the children could have a hearing loss or they can be born with a hearing loss is primarily due to the gene defect. So this is a genetic hearing loss. So as you can see, there's many forms of hearing loss from congenital and genetic hearing loss from noise to noise induced hearing loss, age related hearing loss. Of course, you can also have drug induced hearing loss sometime and uh, certain type of uh, amyloglycoside antibiotics, like calamycin, you give a high dose to people, you can cause permanent hearing loss as well. Oh, wow. Now, w- with all of these, let's say if they're more environmentally triggered, is there still like a genetic component that could still be an underlying factor that can make you more susceptible to it? Or is it strictly yeah. just possible? You are absolutely right. So the... Um, Beyond, like, if you have a gene defect, right, people could have a a mutation in some of the genes, and uh, that will cause hearing loss. So one of the most common form of genetic hearing loss called GJP2, that's a a GJP2 is one of those uh, uh, molecules works in your ear. And if there's a defect in this gene that can cause uh, hearing loss in children, this is actually one of the most common form of uh, genetic hearing loss. Genetic component can also play an important role to the environmental type of hearing loss. For example, a mutation in mitochondrial DNA, now mitochondrial DNA, can make people susceptible to uh, aminoglycoside antibiotics-induced hearing loss. So if you give 
certain people, certain dose of uh, antibiotics, in general, the people will be fine. But if the people carry that mutation, they can become deaf. So that's really play very, genetics play a very important role for even so-called environmental um, induced hearing loss. The other thing is for age-related hearing loss, even we don't know precise mechanism underlying age-related hearing loss, but the general understanding is that there must be a very strong genetic component. And we, we don't really know what the components are, but uh, you know, judging by various studies, by um, different from the vision, from other sensory or other type of uh, um, deficits affecting aging population, we think a strong um, uh, genetic component as well. Interesting. So with the environmental, with the gene, all these different areas that cause the hearing loss, do they all have kind of different pathways that, that cause the hearing loss? That's a very good question. Our ear, um, which is an organ we use to, to do two types of things. One is to detect the sound in the ear. We use that to detect the sound. The other one, we use that to sense the balance. Okay, so auditory system is what we use since to detect the sound. And within auditory system, and there's a structure, it's a snow-shaped structure called the cochlea. And within cochlea, there are many different types of cells are important to hearing. So if anything goes wrong with any type of cells, they can cause permanent hearing loss. However, our inner ear harbors so-called sensory cell called the hair cells. So the hair cell, they are called hair cells, but they're not really not the hair cell like on top of the head, you know, that's actually not called a hair cell. So the in the ear, there's a sensory cell called a hair cells. Its function is really to sense the sun, to detect the sun uh, vibration. And uh, that cell play absolutely critical, essential role to hearing. And this sensory cell, hair cell, can also easily be damaged by various insults such as viral infection, noise, or aging. So as a result, hair cell damage or the death of hair cell, uh, we think is one of the most common cause of uh, hearing loss. But as I said, in addition to hair cells, and many other cells mm -hmm. will also play an important role. So the deficit in them can indeed cause hearing loss. Your team studied a way to potentially regenerate hearing. That's what your latest research shows, and you guys developed a drug to do that, um, addressing the hair cells. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes. So, as I mentioned earlier on, the hair cell can easily be damaged, mm -hmm. but yet our our in a year doesn't really have a capacity to regenerate damaged cells. If cells are damage or die, that's it. We lose them forever and permanently. As a result, if we have a hearing loss due to hair cell damage or hair cell loss, the hearing loss is always permanent. And uh, so far, there's no any treatment, um, any FDA approved treatment for any form of hearing loss in this, in this case. So we have been working on the problem for you know, over 10 years really trying to figure out how we can regenerate hair cell within our inner ear and uh, we'll ultimately use as a way to be developed a treatment for patients suffering from hearing loss. So we take that role to develop a sort of a program trying to understand how the inner ear develops, how the inner ear hair cell develops and how they damaged how they regenerate. And the process is extremely complicated because our ear actually turned out to be the one of those organs just for the biological reason we don't really understand the well. Doesn't have any capacity to regenerate. Okay, so unlike we have some other tissues organ we can regenerate our skins, you can damage, regenerate, no problem. Liver, you can cut off, 
a large portion can regenerate. Even mm -hmm. in heart, considering you know non-regenerative um, tissue, they still have capacity to regenerate to a lesser degree. But in the ears, one of the organs really, as far as we know, and there's no any regeneration capacity. Um, so that makes the process extremely difficult to study. Mm -hmm. um, but that's uh, the, the main, however, is the main goal for, for us if we were ever going to use health regeneration as an approach for the treatment, then we have to solve the problem. With this mouse model that you guys tested this drug on, can you tell us a little bit about what this uh, kind of what this drug consists of and just any kind of just the scope of that whole research in terms of how it was implemented? Right. So across my many species from mouse, rat, elephant, monkey, human, all in a year or all the in a year or my many species do not have capacity to regenerate. Mm -hmm. But if you go down the animal kingdom, you go to a lower vertebrate, chicken, fish, amphibian, birds, suddenly they in a year can regenerate hair cells. Their hair cells can be killed just like ours by noise, by drugs, but after damage or hair cell loss, the cell can be regenerated. As a result, the hearing can recover, can be restored completely. So that actually was the initial starting point for us to think about the why they can regenerate, we cannot. So we actually, many years ago, we performed a study trying to understand um, what is the mechanism involved in chicken hair cell regeneration or fish hair cell regeneration. And from that study, we identify um, gene. One of the gene is uh, very important called the MIC, CMIC. This gene actually has been used in uh, Yamanaka, the factor for IPS establishment. Mm -hmm. We found that in chicken or fish hair cell regeneration, the gene normally is off, but when you damage the hair cell, the gene will be turned on again. As a result, the cell can divide and can renew themselves, become new hair cells. So, so we use that idea. We take that gene and uh, try it in a many species, in our case, in mouse. Mm -hmm. And uh, we actually the gene, actually by itself, it still cannot regenerate. However, there's another study by different groups that showed additional uh, genes called the notch. Uh, it's a kind of a pathway gene, very important for a lot of uh, development, tissue organ development. So by combination of the two genes, notch and meat, suddenly we can get a um, many in a year so to regenerate and also get them to divide. So first of all, in a year cannot divide. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no cell division. So First, we can get a cell to divide. Second, we can get them to become hair cell. The very important aspect of the study is we can do this in a fully mature in a year. So now the big question, what does it mean fully mature in a year? What's the difference between you know, young in a year or mature in a year? Right. The, the difference is very big. So in many in a year, for example, mouse in a year, when they're very young and uh, when newborn mice, if you look at the in a year, you to study that, they actually could do some regeneration under certain circumstances by per manipulating certain pathway, the cell can actually regenerate, hair cell can regenerate. But it's when they reach the full mature status, like a one month old, where mice can hear and in a year fully mature, that's when they truly lose the capacity to regenerate. But for human, it's very important because for human, even newborn, newborn baby, they in a year is already mature, fully mature. Because our in a year actually develop in uterus during the gestation stage, you know, during pregnancy. At the first trimester, you already, in the first trimester, you already have the hair cell formed. And the second trimester, they can detect a sound. You know, that's why baby in uterus can hear music. 
So by the time the baby born is born, the inner ear is fully mature. So for us to be able to regenerate hair cell for ultimate goal as a treatment of hearing loss, we have to be able to perform hair cell regeneration in fully mature inner ear, in mice. And then that kind of idea we can potentially um, translate into human. So our study really have done two main steps. First, we showed a few years ago by activating two important factors, MIG and NOTCH. We can drive the mature inner ear cell to divide. And if we combine that with another transcription factor, it's called eight on one, mm-hmm. we can convert this dividing cell into the hair cell. And that was done a few years ago in a transgenic animal. That means the gene in the mice has been altered in a way you can turn the gene on and off um, easily. But that's really just proof of concept to say, oh, this pathway is really important. Um, regeneration can be achieved in fully mature in a year, but it has to be done through the transgenic animal approach. But we are human, we are not transgenic um, beings. There's no gene or what we can turn on and off easily. So our next step was really reflected in a recent paper is that we're trying to identify what are the molecules, drug, potentially can be used as drug, can um, perform similar hair cell regeneration function. So this study, we, I, you know, we screen a different compound. We use a, a nucleic acid, siRNA, it's a, anyway, it's a, a, a small type of molecule. Mm-hmm. It's to suppress the gene expression. But ultimately, what we found is that we can make a cocktail by using uh, some of the FDA approved drugs together with some new molecule. And those type of molecule has been used um, in some of the clinical study. Not uh, necessarily exactly what we use, but similar technology we use in the clinic. We have the cocktail, it's like a drug-like cocktail. So we have uh, five components, basically every one of them uh, are, is either a clinically proven FDA proved drugs or in a formula which potentially can be used as drugs. So we can use them for regeneration in mature mouse in a year. And in this case, the mouse in a year is not from the transgenic mouse, just wild type mice. Mm-hmm. It's a, what we call the wild type means there's no transgene. You have to perturb in a way uh, we would do to the human. So okay. in that case, we show that we can uh, achieve regeneration of the hair cell in a wild type um, adult mouse in a year. With the drug itself, so are you saying all of those are right now accessible clinically for other diseases? All those different uh, uh, drugs? No, so the the cocktail we have have five components. There's a three okay. um, small molecule and the two sRNA. This small okay. molecule have been all have been used in the clinic. So those are fine, you know, they either FDA approved or already been in a clinical trial. The other two siRNA, they haven't been used in the clinic. They have not have been approved by FDA. But the siRNA technology, say if you find the siRNA and for that develop into the drugs, this technology is there, and uh, which is a uh, one of the common use by Alilan Pharmaceutical. They have a lot of drugs that use the SRNA technology and mm-hmm. with FDA approved drugs. So what I'm saying is that uh, those kind of uh, SRNA can be formulated as a drug by you know the technology already out there. Yeah, so in this case, we showed in a non-transgenic animal, you know, the wild type adult, fully mature in a year by the combination, we can indeed um, regenerate hair cell. And especially we can regenerate hair cell in the animal model. We first kill the hair cell by antibiotics. I told you hair cell very susceptible to to drug treatment or to noise. So we can treat the animal with uh, 
in this case, condomycin, and afterwards is really pretty much wipe out the hair cell. Then by giving those drugs, we can regenerate new hair cells. And so why, how did it work? So what happening, we realized when we use this combination of cocktail, what it does is, is called reprogramming the cell. That in a sense is to turn the biological clock backwards. So this is fully mature in a year. You can think about, you know, the, uh, all the, um, the pathway, everything is all settled where for them very difficult to make any changes to them. And because, uh, on, and in a genetic term, they have this uh, uh, chromatin status that in a closest status, okay, so that inaccessible to many of those manipulations. What those cocktail does really is to reprogram the cell to make them young again, okay, from the old, mature, relatively uh, um, in sort of a, you cannot mend them in a way, but they can turn you will turn the biological clock backwards when they're young. When they're young, they have a lot of capacity. They can, as I said, even in young mouse in a year, the cell can regenerate given a good condition. So we basically turn the from relatively mature old and status to very young status. Suddenly, the chromatin is open again, accessible towards the manipulation or the transcription factors they put in. So they can, uh, that's called reprogramming. And uh, in a way, that's very similar to what uh, Yamanaka IPS cell is like. They use, uh, you know, four factor. They can reprogram the fibroblasts all the way back to stem cells. But in our case, we don't need to reprogram back to stem cells. We just make them a little bit younger. So suddenly they can do all the wonder. Now with this study that you guys did and you applied it to um, the wild mice, how long did you study the, the mice for? So those mice, we studied total about four weeks. So what we okay. did, because there's a lot of uh, process involved. First, we took the mice, we need to, we give them antibiotics to kill the hair cell, wait for a week, make sure the hair cell died. Then we start injecting the cocktail into the middle ear. And the middle ear is actually very accessible. It's, it's very sort of minimally invasive surgery. You can do middle ear delivery to reprogram cells. Afterward, we deliver another factor. It's called ATOM1, which is done by uh, adenovirus. So in that, for that procedure, we actually have to do surgical procedure to deliver into the inner ear. As a result, so the toe, then we wait for another two weeks two to three weeks then. So the total time frame is about four to five weeks before we see new hair cells. Could we link the hair cells to them actually improving the symptoms in, in terms of actually hearing or how does that look like? Yeah, so those are hair cells we found even by the time we we look at it in a year, that cell are relatively so-called immature. They look like a very young hair cell. They're not fully mature yet. So we think for one, they need a little bit more time to become mature. Of course, one of the most important questions is what does it do to hearing? Unfortunately, in our current condition, we cannot assess the hearing is because we use a, to deliver the transcription factor 81 into the inner ear. We have to use adenovirus which is actually known to cause damage to in the ear. In addition, we have to perform a surgical procedure. And um, there's a special term I want to use that will confuse people. Anyway, that surgical procedure is really damaging to the inner ear. So if you do that surgical procedure together with the adenovirus, even the normal ear, you create hearing loss. So as a result, we, we really cannot assess how it's going to um, impact hearing, but that's exactly uh, our next step, we are doing now, we're working now, is to find a different way to deliver uh, the gene, the ATOM1, into the inner ear in a surgical procedure that's minimally invasive, also with a viral vector that doesn't do any damage to hearing. 
So we think by controlling this condition, we'll be able to assess how the regenerative hair cell contributes to hearing. Because those mice without hair cells are deaf. So we want to see if we can indeed restore hearing in this model. Okay, now with this most recent, re most recent research that you did, um, what was the ultimate goal? Um, so we have shown we can regenerate hair cells. Okay. Now our next goal is to use this regeneration approach to restore hearing in animal model, in mice. And uh, if we can restore hearing, then we would hope to be able to work in industry to really move quickly to like optimize the drugs and find the best combination, uh, whatever industry standard is used for, you know, um, for the lead optimization or, or better screening. So we can move the work towards the clinic. That's really the ultimate goal is move as quickly okay. as possible towards clinic. So the next, so with the next stage, how long do you see that going for to being able to, uh, to apply it correctly into the ear? Up to now, actually, the, so when we regenerate hair cell, right? When you think about the hair cell in the, in the ear, hair cell that are surrounded by other cell types. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the major cell types called the supporting cell. When hair cells are gone, what we have to do is converting the supporting cell into the hair cell. Okay, so that's really important. Regeneration coming from, um, from the non-hair cell becoming hair cell. And in our case, when we did the experiment, even up till uh, now, it's been very challenging to find another vector that can target supporting cell efficiently without causing damage to the inner ear. So adenovirus, the one we use, mm -hmm. can deliver into the supporting cell, yet also does damage to many other cell types. So recently, just at the meeting, uh, last week, uh, I we realized there might be another uh, new vector. It's called the AAV, adenal associated vector, which has been used for gene therapy, extremely safe. We've done tons of work with that in the, in a year. Doesn't cause any damage. And mm -hmm. people have found certain type of AAV can indeed target supporting cells. So we are in the process of testing that AAV to use that deliver the one the gene eight and one into the supporting cell and see how that will lead to regeneration and also hearing recovery. If we can achieve a hearing recovery in mice, then we can move very, very quickly uh, towards clinic. There's a many stages in clinical design. Even before it can reach uh, people, you have to do toxicology study, you know, pharmacokinetic study and uh, large yeah. animal study. And so that could take you know, a few years, but hopefully the first hurdle is really to get hearing back, then we can move as quickly as possible towards um, human application. Has it been done before where it's been delivered to the ear, or is this the first time that you guys are taking that approach? The, they have been many vectors developed for the in the ear, and uh, like for gene therapy, right? Mm -hmm. uh, with the hair cells still there, and uh, say the gene with a defect in uh, in the hair cell, that defect had to be corrected. And so AAV, as I mentioned, is very good targeting the hair cells. But AAV up to now is not very good targeting supporting cells, the cells we actually need um, for regeneration of hair cells. So, yeah, I would say there hasn't been really good and study, well, it's not like for trying, just very hard to find appropriate AAV that can target supporting cell. It's, okay. it's actually very easy to target the hair cells, but not supporting cells. How would you ultimately measure success? Yes. The, well, of course, ultimate success will be judging by how it can help people with hearing loss. Mm -hmm. That's really right. the ultimate, our goal is really um, towards that. So we would envision a situation, for example, a person who came to the clinic who has a hearing loss and uh, 
let's say, actually it's quite common. You know, some people yeah. go to concert, right? Stand next to the loudspeaker, whatever, exposed to the uh, extremely uh, high intensity sound for hours. Suddenly afterward, they couldn't hear well. And that is a very classic uh, damage to the hair cells. Okay, so if that one, sometimes they may lose the hearing, but the hearing may come back um, a few days, a week later. But mm -hmm. in many cases, it doesn't come back. So that means the hearing loss become permanent. So those would be the um, patient we would like to target and to give the treatment. Ultimately, what we'll do is uh, before the treatment, we know they have hearing loss. We know how severe hearing loss is because the hearing loss can be measured very precisely by what uh, the sound level you can hear, what frequency you can hear, right? So, mm -hmm. but okay. if we give the treatment after regeneration, we hope to see there's some improvement in, you know, from the deficit they experience. And uh, so how good the improvement is judging by how good the, you know, regeneration process goes. And uh, in that case, you know, if um, animal study is any indication, that might suggest we may not have to wait for a long, long time. You know, some of the study, people may on drugs for years before they can see any result. But in this case, if hair cell can indeed be regenerated and can restore the function, uh, there should be a relatively uh, uh, short period of time, maybe in months, not in years. And we can see the hearing restoration. So that would be my ultimate goal to see the treatment because people who suffer from hearing loss and uh, then they can regain what they've lost. And if that works, then we'll have a large population, such as age the hearing loss population. So right. in That would be in huge. World, I mean, everybody yeah. I mean, everyone has some sort of hearing loss as you get older, as you said, right? Exactly. So this uh, this is statistics. Uh, worldwide, now close to 500 million people are suffering from um, moderate to severe hearing loss. It's classified by WHO. Mm -hmm. But for age-related hearing loss, as people live in uh, longer um, lives, you know, all over the world, and but the hearing loss it become a real problem. Overall, the number we use is over 65 years old, 30% of population suffer from moderate severe hearing loss. If it's over 75 years, over half of them suffer from um, hearing loss. So when you think about, especially these people can live 80, 90, that means there's a long period of time they really suffer a great deal from the lack of hearing. And we all know these days the evidence is very strong. Hearing loss also contribute to like uh, dementia, Alzheimer's, or also um, some you know isolation, anxiety, all associated with the elder population. Right. So it's an underlying thing that can address all, all those different issues based on what you're telling. Yeah, me. that could essentially help. You know, hearing loss is not the, the only component, but one of the major contributing factors. So if you can help to deal with the hearing loss you may actually help many other conditions as well. Okay. That's our hope. There's definitely steps getting there, but it looks like you're getting very close every time as you guys are progressing. So this next phase that you guys are at right now, in terms of what you just shared, where you're still studying the mice, but um, trying to go ahead and figure out the best way of delivering the drug. Right. Um, right. What, what needs to be seen there before moving it to the next stage? Yeah, so in mice, what we would like to see is uh, we regenerate hair cell. They actually do what they're supposed to do. Okay. Because we know uh, inside in a year, there are different types of hair cell. There's a so-called inner hair cell, there's an outer hair cell. They have a slightly different functions, but we can measure the function. So, so what we mean by that is those hair cells have to undergo certain type of uh, differentiation and maturation. So they have to become specialized hair cell and also they they have to mature. As I mentioned earlier on, 
So far, we look at hair cells, they look really young, like a young hair cell, just been born. We wanted them to become mature hair cells. So, you know, the hair cell has this uh, so-called hair, is uh, what we call the stereocilia on the, on the top of the hair cells. So there's a special pattern and structure for them. So they can, trans they can perform its function. Okay. We need to be able to see that. And uh, obviously we need to, in an animal model, the key question is, uh, can we get a hearing back? Okay. So if we can get a hearing back, I think that will be the watershed event. Then we can move really towards uh, preclinical study, you know, I, I need a labeling study. How soon do you think something like this could be available to a human at the early stages of clinical trials? That's always a very difficult question to answer. You know, we've been constantly asked uh, how long it's going to take. We really, I can't give you an um, answer to that question because we really don't know. And uh, if everything goes as we um, expected, uh, maybe within five years, we could, uh, you know, move towards um, beyond the animal and move towards the clinic. Um, that that's a big if, okay. If we, if everything goes as smoothly as we expected, but as we've been in the field long enough, we always know there might be some unexpected issues and problem we have to solve, and even some things that we even don't know. And if we solve the next problem, there may be new problem comes. But what I can say is with each um, step we have taken and all the project, all the work we have done, once we are moving along at a faster pace, mm -hmm. you know, I was thinking we've been working on this for over 10 years, maybe 15 years, and uh, I can clearly see the pace is picking up uh, much faster and we have more tools and uh, uh, more capability to do a lot of things at the same time. So we can move much faster and uh, so I would say next milestone, I'm hoping to achieve in an animal to get a hearing back, maybe two to three years. Then from there, we'll really move towards um, clinic development. Is this going to be like a one-time kind of like injection or one-time delivery? Is it something that's going to be kind of uh, multiple doses? I know it's very early stages, but do you guys have a process that you're currently utilizing with animals that you see could translate to humans? Yeah, so that's a very good question. Ultimately, we want to use a one-time thing, but last lifelong. Because hair cell itself, you know, when you think about it, we're born with a certain number of hair cells. So each year, we have like 16,000 hair cells, and we're born with that many. That's it. We stay there. As we grow older, we use, we damage them, the numbers decrease over time, and there will be no new cells will be added on. But with the regeneration, if we can regenerate hair cells, we expect them to stay for the rest of life. The you know majority of us have hearing throughout the life. That means the hair cell you're born with, they last a lifetime. Even if you're 100 years old, they're still there doing what they're supposed to do. So we regenerate hair cells exactly. They should do exactly the same thing. They should stay young and uh, function through the rest of your life, provided you don't damage them again. You know, you don't want to... So that's a different story, but majority of people, I think that would be a one-time thing. So we do one, whatever procedure, and it can last a lifetime. That's amazing. To a degree, you consider, we, our goal is to have a permanent fix. Anything else that you like, look, this is something that, that's really important that people should know about, or, or an important finding that we should, that, um, that just really stood out to you? Absolutely. So as I mentioned, Hearing loss is one of the most common sensory deficits affecting human population. Mm -hmm. But yet, there's absolutely no treatment for hearing loss. The only treatment we have is cochlear implant, hearing aid. And, but in terms of drugs, there's none. And mm -hmm. uh, so it affects so many people. Actually, recent estimates is over 1 billion people are affected by hearing loss. So one of the people infected is a large number, and also the uh, add a huge, the huge burden 
to individual and society. As a, as a community in hearing research, we have come a long way. Like my lab is working on gene therapy, genome editing to treat genetic um, hearing loss. We have had a very good success in mouse model. So we can use gene therapy to treat genetic, certain type of genetic hearing loss in mouse model, get the hearing back beautifully. We can use the most recent CRISPR genome editing. We can do the same thing, get the hearing back. And some of the work actually already start moving to clinic, uh, wow. you know, uh, far ahead. Actually, uh, I think this year, at least there's a couple of companies and um, plus some labs, they are going to do the first human gene therapy trial um, for genetic hearing loss. Okay, so we expect if it works, we should hear new this year. Yeah. And uh, so that would be one of the most exciting time that is uh, there may be a real solution to certain type of genetic hearing loss. But that will be the beginning. And that's the tip of iceberg. There's a lot of development underneath among many, many institutions, companies, and uh, academic centers, and we are part of that. So we're hoping the next years, decade, you'll see many new um, treatment options become available. Dr. And here Chen, that's really absolutely generation one of them. Yeah, it's truly this is an absolutely exciting time. Wow. So with those gene therapies, um, how are they being administered? I'm curious because you guys are trying to go and figure out how to administer these drugs, right? Yeah. So they, there's a different way to administer. They can go through the, your ear canal, through ear canal access to the inner ear through the other way. Or alternatively, they can have the surgical procedure to open you know, the skull, the back of the ear, mm -hmm and to insert in that way. That's traditionally be used for cochlear implant, for example. Mm -hmm. That's how. But these days, I think the future direction may be to deliver, uh, like including ours, and uh, for hair cell regeneration, for gene therapy, ultimately maybe just through the ear cannot go into the inner ear. That may be, um, become routine. So that actually, if that works well, the surgery is very, um, it's not a big deal. It's very minimally invasive. Right. So it's going to revolutionize uh, the treatment. Doctor, that's very exciting. When when are these clinical trials occurring and how long are they going to be going for? So this trial, I'm aware one already started in China and there's a couple, two or three of them will start in, in the US, actually a couple of them in Boston area one in France, and they all started this year. Okay. So I'm hoping by the end of the year, before end of the year, we'll hear the news. You, you know, if it works, I think we'll get the first set of uh, information, sort of a signal it's going to work. How long it's going to last? Like, uh, it depends. It depends on how each company, institute, negotiate with FDA, they want you to do how long follow up. Mm -hmm. But I think if you see the real result, that should be in a matter of months, not in years. That's amazing. That's, That's very exciting. exciting. We're definitely going to keep That's track of it. Yes. I, I'll let you know when, when that happens. Thank you. And maybe we can uh, reconnect again and, and go through those and kind of just see how that can impact yeah. the future, you know, uh, of medicine and Absolutely. research. That's yeah, great. it would be a revolutionary um, treatment. Definitely. Dr. Chen, man, I, I personally have learned a lot. I know the viewers have learned so much from you. I mean, you're, you're, you're leading the research in, in hearing, hearing treatment in, in the, I would say probably in the world, right? Correct me if I'm wrong. And so this information is very valuable. Yes. Um, you know, we're excited to work in the field because uh, hearing loss is a field traditionally being ignored, not much attention paid to that. But uh, there are actually uh, many research like me really focus on solving the problem, trying to bring new treatment to patients. And we all know each individual, each of us have been affected individually, you know, who 
you know your family member, your grandma, your grandparents who couldn't hear you, and uh, you know that happened all the time, right? So we really want to bring up the treatment option for all the people, and we've been working in the field long enough to know we have come a long way. Now is really tipping point, mm -hmm. so we are going to have some spectacular success as a field. As a, you know, collectively, we'll have some spectacular success, success in the f near future. So that's truly exciting for all of us, and also is an incentive to work for us to work even harder. Of course, that's great. I mean, Dr. Chen, thank you so much for your time. It's been, I mean, it, it it's so great and exciting to have the leading doctor in in hearing treatment, Dr. Chen, the, in the world. I would say right here speaking with, with us and sharing information that probably people can't access anywhere else, at least in terms of like videos and actually speaking with you. So I'm very grateful. I know um, I, I'm very excited to go ahead and have this video available for, for everyone. And um, thank you so much for your time. It was truly a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you very much for the invitation. I hope the information will be useful for the audience. And, uh, you know, yeah, keep, uh, keep the update. And I'm sure there'll be more good news down the road.